Clash at the Castle. So, WWE has finally returned to the UK once more for Clash at the Castle. Last time around it was in Cardiff, Wales. This time they're in Glasgow, Scotland. The home of Drew McIntyre. There was some hype with this show seeing as it's another show again outside the US. WWE has really figured out the money method I'd say. Selling out these arenas and make the show seem bigger. The problem with the US shows is usually the crowds. I feel like they're not giving it their all. And that is mostly because of the fact that the shows happen often there. Here these guys are hungry. They're eager to always watch these shows. And it makes for good crowd reactions. Alright with that said let's get into it. The first match of the show is an I quit match for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship. Cody Rhodes defended the title against AJ Styles. I don't need to mention it, but that crowd was crazy. Scotland's been hungry for a big show for a while now, and it showed here. Both men were shown to be more vicious and more driven to make their opponents suffer, and it was something that Rhodes had to understand seeing as he was that super good guy. And that was the big story with him trying to figure things out and push himself to the deepest to his worst in order to get this win. Styles didn't have a problem getting into the match, and if anything, he was benefiting a lot. Cody was bleeding and suffering, whereas the challenger found himself comfortable. He was struggling to find himself some form, especially with every moment the ref puts the mic in his face. The crowd was chanting, fuck you, Styles, and he was enjoying it. There was moments where Cody got into it, but it wasn't much because AJ Styles was resting a style he knew very well. It suited him a lot, especially with the change in style he had as a heel being more aggressive and vicious. He tried to break his neck, but even then it wasn't enough. The will of the crowd was holding the champion and keeping him into it. He was refusing to quit, but his body though was a different story. He couldn't really keep up and Styles was insistent that he was out, knowing that maybe just maybe the title was coming. AJ slowed down the match, handcuffed him, and even threatened his mom, but Cody managed to fight back and get into the match to uncuff himself and inflict some damage. This was the beginning of the end for AJ Styles. He just never got back into it and only made the champion look insane. He tried to save himself, but once he was handcuffed, it was over. He was done, and Cody Rhodes managed to make him say I quit, only for the champion to still drop him with the steel steps after the match. This was great. I think both men have incredible chemistry together. They kind of make me want to see a third match, but it's almost impossible with the way they did this one. Maybe they could do a ladder match, but AJ Styles quit. There's no real reason for them to do a third match. Cody has been in form at the right and most importantly, best time. Regardless of what happens later on, this title reign will definitely be a memorable one and for all the good reasons. Very enjoyable stuff, you know, Cody's been putting it down ever since he won the title at WrestleMania. And it's one of the first title reigns in a while that I've seen where the champion wins the title at WrestleMania and doesn't feel like an afterthought a couple of months afterwards. He's actually shown up and made good on the title reign, so it's good to see. It really is. Then you know, after the match, Sol Sokoa came in teasing what's to come. They attacked Cody, the new bloodline or budget bloodline let's call them because they're a joke let's be honest. Then KO and Randy Orton came out, Orton had a slight glance at the title by the looks of it, teasing what's to come, and there it is. So, they got two options, they're either going to go with Cody and Solo, which god forbid happens, I personally don't want to see that, nor do I care, I personally do not want to see that at all, I don't care for... I don't care for a Cody Rhodes and Solo Sokoa match. That sounds diabolical in itself. Or option number two, which is a six-man tag team match, which really does make sense. They could do that as a stopgap for the title reign, we'll see. But <laughs> I don't want to see a Solo Sokoa title match. I just don't. Okay, the next match is a triple threat tag team match for the Women's Tag Team Championships. Jade Cargill and Bianca Belair defended the titles against Elba Fire and Isla Daunt. And Shayna Baszler and Zoe Stark. The first part of the match highlighted Cargill's strength as a super athlete. The others should have overwhelmed her, but it turned out to be the opposite for them. It really felt like the champions were miles ahead of the others in status and in star power. They really felt unstoppable here. Baszler and Stark had to increase the intensity to find an opportunity in this match. Separating the champions worked well, but again, when Cargill came in, that changed. She messed up the springboard but flowed back into the sequence. They got back together and it seemed like the end when Isla Dawn hit Cargill with a German suplex before pinning Baszler herself to win the titles. Huge moment. Isla Dawn and Elba Fire win the titles. They won the title in their own country which doesn't bode well for Drew McIntyre. As to the match, it was decent but not that good. You know, it was not bad. I'm not gonna say it was bad. There were some nice moments here and there but it wasn't all that. But it was nice to see the country woman win it for once. It did come across as a shocker and who knows maybe they might lose the titles later this week on Smackdown who knows. But decent stuff. The next match is the Intercontinental Championship. Sami Zayn defended the title against Chad Gable. This story's been on for about two months. Gable's become more desperate and more aggressive to win the title and he doesn't have Alpha Academy as the best supporters of his but they're still by his side. Pure wrestling in the beginning with these two. Gable had the edge a bit especially because of his experience and his intensity. The match got going and it seemed to benefit the challenger more but he had a lot of interest in bringing in his guys to make the win cheaper he held his own against zane but he was still in it the champion was resilient the match was great there was no problems with it it felt very tight and rigged then the drama happened gable's pressing otis and it got to the point where he got maxine in harm's way again and hurt her otis had enough zane took advantage and retained the title the story is that gable still can't get one over sammy zane when it matters most he didn't show up he bottled it he messed up now personal opinion i think they should have had him winning here it kind of becomes too much when they constantly tease something it starts to mean less 
Like, Gable will probably win the title in the future, but I don't think there was a better moment than here. His Alpha Academy storyline became the main focus in that time. I personally think it should have. Zayn's had a great title reign, though, and by the looks of it, he's off to the next challenger. However, there is one way to do it, which is most likely going to happen. The Creed brothers as Gable's protégés, he could take out the Alpha Academy, replace them. They got Ivy Nile. They got the Creed brothers themselves. You know, they could replace everyone. Much stronger, much more focused. That way he could win the title, but... And it really makes you wonder, like, why do we got to go through all of this to get to that very point? You know, because I think they dragged the story a bit. It's been about three months with Chad Gable. Well, actually, four months, technically, with Chad Gable chasing the IC title. I personally think if they're going to do the Creed Brothers thing, they got to do it ASAP. You know, that really makes sense if they do it ASAP. But again, this match is a great example as to why I think sometimes WWE misses a mark. Stuff is simple, you know. Sometimes they could have a great moment here, but they decide to drag it up. All right, the next match is for the WWE Women's Championship. Bailey defended the title against Piper Niven. This was hyped up a lot throughout the week. Not because of the match itself, but what it meant for Piper. The fans were hyped to see her, but we all knew that this would be a normal title defense for Bailey. The match was better than I thought, though. Piper put up a fight and had a great performance with the match kicked up a notch when Chelsea Green was ejected. Chelsea Green interfered once again later on. Bailey drops her. This is when the match got better. Back and forth action, near falls, but in the end, Bailey stole a win and retained the title. Piper Niven had a good performance. I liked her here. She doesn't really get to show out at the top of the card, so nice to see her make good on her homecoming. That was good. Like, I'm sure she got to enjoy the fact that even though she lost, she got to have a good match in front of her home country. That's nice. And the main event. Damian Priest defends the World Heavyweight Championship against Drew McIntyre. Drew has returned home. This was an incredible moment to see him back here in Scotland. The crowd went wild. Ten years ago, he was released from WWE, and now he's back in the main event. Drew has worked hard to get to this moment. You know, it was amazing to see him go back, come back to WWE, work on himself, improve all around, win that title. But even then, it felt like he still hasn't had that moment as champion. Like, he was WWE champion four years ago, and actually had a good run, but it feels like he wasn't champion because of when it happened. With that said, this match was pretty good. It was much better than I thought. Priest was coming into enemy territory as well, and the crowd made sure to let him know. I wasn't really hyped for the match, but more so for Drew McIntyre, you know. I thought this was a moment where he was probably going to win the title, but <laughs> some stuff happened. Action was good. A lot of great near falls. Drew catching McPriest with the Claymore off guard was a nice moment. It was very good. Priest got injured during the match, his leg got caught on the ropes, and despite this, he put on a good-ass performance. He actually overperformed despite that injury. It was one of the best matches of his entire career, which is nice to see, especially because people are calling him a transitional champion and whatnot, and he is. He's a transitional champion. We're not going to lie about that. It's obvious his day, but he's putting on good matches in the process. Drew McIntyre, though, it felt like it was his match, you know? It was his match to win, and right when he got the job done, by the looks of it, the referee comes in. He counts one to i'm thinking who the hell is this i thought it was jd mcdonough i don't know why i thought it was jd mcdonough turns out it was freaking cm punk the way they did it was so impressive it was so nice and the reason why i liked it so much is because it was surprising how they did it like i personally believed cm punk was coming out they leaked it on twitter this week yesterday today whatever they leaked the fact that cm punk was coming we all knew that however the way they did it with the referee coming in i really liked it he really felt like a moment from the attitude era impressed me a lot i liked it he cussed drew that title low blowed him which led to priest retaining the title so there's that again i really thought drew should have won here i really thought that even though cm punk came in he was unable to ruin his moment i think that would have been very nice i would have liked that a lot but that didn't happen here turns out Drew McIntyre's got to deal with some other stuff. He's got to deal with CM Punk, which leaves Damian Priest open to defend his title against somebody else. Perhaps somebody in the Judgment Day. Finn Balor, perhaps. This is a logical direction, obviously, the fact that Drew lost. I personally didn't like it that much, obviously. But it does make sense for the feud with CM Punk to be as intense as it is. If he won here, it would have been bragging and whatever. But with CM Punk getting one over him and whatnot, it makes the feud a little more interesting. I do think he should have won here, though. You know, it's kind of contradictory. I do think he should have won here. With that said, Damian Priest, his title reign has been going on in a weird way. He ain't an amazing champion, but he isn't horrible, obviously. We'll see. But this was a good match. It was much better than I thought it was. It was much better than I thought it was going to be, so yeah. All right, let's clash the castle. Good event once more. Good event. Weird booking decisions. I do think Chad Gable should have won. Drew. Stuff was weird, but it wasn't a bad event at all. It was very enjoyable. It wasn't Backlash like last month. Backlash was way better. That was a good-ass event. But it was nice, you know? It was a nice... It shows the progress that WWE made in the last year. The way they're going international, stuff like that. But man, they gotta add one more match to the card. I know five matches makes it seem important. It's UFC-esque with the pay-per-views and how they do five matches and all that. But they gotta add more matches. Just one. One more match would be enough for me. 
The reason why I say that is because you're watching an opener, and a couple of minutes later, it seems like the main event's coming up. But yeah, good event. I don't really have many problems with it. I, I personally don't have much problems with it. I do think Drew should have won, but it isn't a big problem. So yeah. Alright, what did you guys think of Clash of the Castle? Please comment down below next to first video. Make sure you hit the claymore on the like button and perhaps the crossroads on the subscribe button. Peace. I'm out.